Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we honor you today. We receive our daily bread, Lord. And even right now, I declare as your word is coming forth, burdens are being removed and yokes are being destroyed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, now, listen. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And yesterday I was sharing something with you concerning the uh, giving. Praise God. And it should be by the Holy Ghost. Now, remember what Paul said in Galatians chapter 6. He said, He that sows into the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows into the spirit shall reap what? Life everlasting. Now, what does that mean? If I give based on my flesh, if I give, you know, people say, oh, you must tight where you go to church. Now, there is no scripture that says so. After all, the money belongs to God and not the church. So, so how can you go wrong if you ask the owner of the money? I don't know why we even argue this. It is God's money, right? Yes. So, why can't you ask him? Okay. You know, sometimes some arguments are just baseless. No, no. You see, eh, eh. the person, the owner of the money is alive, right? So let's ask him. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and, and, and people, you know, people who argue that we're not supposed to pay tight. Listen, I challenge. You see, when they bring up that argument with you, ask them this simple question. Have you heard God tell you concerning this? Because most of their argument is academic. Yeah. Even those that are even for or against. Most of the arguments you hear, they are academic arguments. But the person we are talking about is alive. So why can't we ask him? Now I'm telling you what I know I have heard from the Lord. And I'm telling you, you do the same. You go ask the Lord. See, if you doubt what I'm saying, go ask the Lord. And let him tell you. Praise God. Wow. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Now Paul says he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to hinder the gospel. Now I shared all these things I shared with you yesterday for this purpose. You see, now if the people were given right, Paul would not need to have written this. It is because they were given based on the flesh that Paul had to do this to them. He had to write to them. See, now he was bringing some measure of correction. Now notice what he began to say in verse 13. He says, Do you not know that they which minister about holy things leave off the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so had the Lord ordained, notice, even so had the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should leave off the gospel. See, those who preach the gospel should leave by the gospel or leave. What does that mean? It means because you preach the gospel, the gospel you preach will feed you. That is how God has ordained it. Now, that doesn't mean you go charge the people you're preaching to. That doesn't mean you say, ah, this city I'm going to, I must get 10 million naira from this place. No, 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 no. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, you who preach the gospel must learn to receive your pay from the one who sent you to preach the gospel. That's how you should live. You don't, you don't get a job to assist the gospel that you're preaching. No, you don't do that. And, and, and you see, people don't know this. People don't know this. There is a difference, you see, in scriptures, like, like Jesus called it in, in, in Luke chapter 16. He called it unrighteous mammon. See, there's a difference between unrighteous mammon and true riches. Many, lots of believers have not entered into true riches yet. Some have just tasted a bit of it. But you see, many people are in the realm of unrighteous mammon. Now, the reason they've not been able to enter into true riches is because they have not learned how to handle unrighteous mammon. Now, Jesus said it in Luke chapter 16 and verse 11. Let me just rush there. Now, don't close your first Corinthians if you, if you have your Bibles open. Let's just look at Luke chapter 16. I want to show you something quickly. Luke 
16, verse 11, Jesus speaking there, he says, If therefore you have not been faithful, I want you to notice, if therefore you have not been faithful with the unrighteous mammon, okay, I'm, I've got to be faithful with the unrighteous mammon. He says, if I'm not faithful with the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? So there is the unrighteous mammon and then there is the true riches. Now what's the difference? I'll tell you. Unrighteous mammon, now when you walk, the salary you get when you, when you walk is unrighteous mammon. The profit you make in a business is unrighteous mammon. You know what they say, hustle, all the money you hustle for. Legal hustle, every every hustle you hustle, all the money you get from that hustle, hustling, from that stress, from that labor, is called unrighteous mammon. Now, why is it called unrighteous mammon? Because it came from your sweat. Ah, yeah. I, I, I wish your heart would be open to see God. And you see his plans for your life. You remember in the Garden of Eden, God told Adam that out of your sweat, you will eat from the ground. Now that was when unrighteous mammon was introduced. See, the reason is because God did not originally ordain man to sweat for food. He never created a life of stress for you before you will get. So you say, ah, you know, I have to work hard so that I can feed my family. No, sir. No. No, that is wrong. That is unrighteous mammon. And, and, and now look at, look, at how, look at what Jesus said. You've got to be faithful with the unrighteous mammon first. And then God will qualify you to, for true riches. How am I faithful with the unrighteous mammon? What you do with it. What am I supposed to do with unrighteous mammon? Jesus, the same Luke chapter 16, Jesus talked about making friends. See, Jesus said make, it, make friends by means of unrighteous mammon so that when it fails, because unrighteous mammon fails, it surely fails. How do you make friends? Now, that's what I'm telling you about. Your giving, your tithing. You start from there. Make sure you are faithful before the Lord consigning it. How do I show faithfulness before the Lord? You receive money, a righteous mammon. You got your salary. You got your, your profit from the business. The first thing you do is show honor to the Lord by taking out the tithes. See, and then you go before the Lord and God instructs you on what to do with it. And when he instructs you on what, you don't start looking, oh, 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 I don't like this person's face. Why would I? No, I would rather give it to that. You are showing unfaithfulness. See, I, I'll tell you the truth. God sometimes will tell you to give your tithe to someone you don't like. Praise God. Oh, yes. See, that, that, that's why I said the moment you honor God with it, and he says, give it to us, it's no more your tithe. So you don't need to go about telling people, and hey, God says, I should give you my tithe. And then, then, then uh, 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 please, please, please. No, no. See, he can tell you to give your tithe to someone who's not even a believer, to you. See, but when he does that, you just know that, oh, that's a child of God because God knows him. Praise God. Yeah, that's how it works. God told me this. I set up the tithing system so that I will meet the needs of all my children. See, now the only money in your hand that God can lay claim to is the tithe. That's why in Malachi he can say to them, you have robbed me. He can't say you've robbed him because you didn't give offering in church. He, he, he can't say you've robbed me because you didn't give to the poor. No. If you don't give to the poor, God cannot accuse you. See, but there is a blessing when you give to the poor. But, but here is this. When we tithe, right, even the poor is going to be taken care of. Because sometimes God will tell you to give your tithe to that, that fellow, that poor person. Or the, he, he, you know, he just knows how to do these things. It's not your business. But the testimony that comes, now that's where it says, if we sow in the spirit, we shall reap life everlasting. I, he tell, I've seen this happen many, many times. Almost every time, praise God. The Lord, you're praying and, and say, Lord, you know, we've got your tithe. And then you hear the Lord says, give it to Susan. So, okay, thank you, Lord. 
And then we called the person up. Oh, can you send your account number? Because uh, we, we've got something we need to send to you. Okay. And we always tell them, the Lord commanded us to give you this. And then we give it. Wow. Wow. Do you know? Do you know? I, I had a deadline to meet today. And this is just the exact amount I needed to meet the deadline. Wow. Thank you. You've just shown me that God truly is Lord. <laughs> now that's what I love to hear. Praise God. That's life everlasting. Because you are causing that person's faith to be established. Thank you, Jesus. You see how we take out corruption away? Because when we keep giving in the flesh, you take your tithe and your offerings to someone who doesn't need it. And when he has so much money, he doesn't know what to do next, start thinking of all manner of thoughts. And that's what unrighteous mammon does to you. Now, what are true riches? I'll tell you what true riches are. True riches are the money the Lord begins to bless you with that you don't labor for. Now, watch. I want you to see something. It begins with you, starting with your unrighteous mammon. When God commands you to give unrighteous mammon to someone, you are causing true riches to come to that person. Now, when true riches come to someone because of you, you are setting up yourself also to receive true riches. Now, I never thought about that before. As I was sharing with you, the Holy Spirit just opened my eyes to see that part. Praise God. Now, I know Jesus said the same measure you meet out, it shall be measured back to you. True riches is the money you didn't labor for. Proverbs says, The blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. It added no sorrow to it. Now, what does it mean, added no sorrow to it? It means it doesn't require your toiling. God, it's not a blessing if you worked for it. I'm telling you the truth. It's a payment. You need to understand that. It's a blessing when you look at yourself and say, what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> you deserve it because you're a child of God. Praise God. Yeah, that's it. So when you use your unrighteous mammon and show faithfulness before the Lord by causing it to be a blessing to someone else. Now, your unrighteous mammon becomes a blessing to someone else. In other words, it becomes true riches to someone else. And that person realized that, do you know God just sent me my house rent? Say, how? I mean, someone just called me and said, God said he should give me money. And that was exactly my house rent. What's that? True riches. My house rent was paid from heaven. Praise God. God just sent me a car. How? Someone walked up to me and then I know him somewhere, you know, I, you know he, he just said he was praying and God said he should come and give me his car. What's that? Your car came from heaven. Oh, yes. Because the command came from heaven. Get in this flow, praise God. And let's bring God's blessing on the earth. And you show faithfulness in that. Not you do it once. Hmm. Ah, this thing, Kai, I don't know. I like that pastor. It's that pastor I like. I want to be giving my tithes to. No, sir. It's not your money. After you give your tithe, if you like him so much, you can give him another money, but not your tithe. Your tithe should be given to the owner and let him direct you. That is faithfulness. If you show faithfulness there, then he will begin to bring true riches to you. And I'm sure you want to enjoy true riches. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen. True riches never diminishes. So the earlier you begin to practice that and show yourself faithful in it, the better for you. Unrighteous mammon can diminish. You can lose that job and that's it. Your life crumbles. But you see, once you begin to receive true riches, now true riches doesn't just necessarily be money. Someone can just walk up to you and say, I don't know, I was praying last night and God said, I should get you involved in this business. And, and, and real business now. And say, oh, really? Okay, let me pray about it. And God gives a confirmation and you guys go into it and you begin to. Now that business is established on the word of God. It will last for generations. I'm telling you the truth. Let's pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is your plan that is being made manifest. And I pray everyone is getting a hold of it. And it's working in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.